today we are actually I'm making my version of shrimp and grits and as you'll find out it's 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 grits not fully grits uh, so I'll explain that later but first I'm going to make a salad that we're going to be having with the grits because this is a real dinner that Hubs and I are going to be eating after the stream and so we like to definitely um, have some vegetables with our um, our food. So I'm gonna making a salad and move my laptop over and move the camera. I'll be moving the camera up. Hey, Greg, how are you? Let me just move this camera back a little bit. We're gonna be getting a lot of different camera shots today. So definitely not trying to be fancy, but it's just the nature of the beast here. Let me just move this light down a little bit. Make yeah, sure. A great pic picture of the hole and the uh, underneath the sink. <laughs> He obsesses over the hole. However, he doesn't fix the hole. So, oh, no. you know, hey. <laughs> so in any event, I'm gonna make a salad first. So Greg, how are you this weekend? Are you having a good weekend so far? I hope you are. Um, making a tri-color salad that, uh, the recipe I actually got uh, from one of my favorite shows to watch on the uh, cooking or in the Food Network, and that is The Kitchen. I love, that show specifically because, first of all, there's a couple different chefs on there and they have a lot of fun together and they don't take themselves generally too seriously and it's kind of fun to see the banter between them as they're fixing some different meals. So, um, and DS, hello, hey. Greg is with us, DS is with us. Lashandra, oh, I'm so glad you're with us. I know you said you were gonna pop on, so it's great to have you on chat. So I was just mentioning that I'm gonna be making a salad before I dive into my shrimp and grits because I want this ready to go because once we get our grits um, kind of ready and you'll kind of see my version of the grits, everything will move kind of fast. So I do wanna get the salad ready. So welcome, welcome everyone. It's really great to have you all on. And how's, how's everyone's weekends? And also, how do you feel about shrimp and grits? I'd love to know. Meanwhile, I'm going to be chopping up some romaine that I've already washed. And I'm gonna be adding um, some endive and some radicchio to make a tricolor salad. As I was mentioning, this salad, I first saw um, the specifics of it uh, on the kitchen and one of the chefs there, uh, GZ, I think it's um, Jeffrey Zakarian, he made it and he loves a good salad. And I love the different, uh, using the different, um, you know, lettuces in it. I think it adds a lot of crunch and variety, which I absolutely love. So I'm just gonna, I just added some romaine. I'm now gonna chop up some radicchio and just kind of shred it to add it. And some people saw this on the, um, the wing stream that I had this week. So just, I love the color of the radicchio and I love um, the bitterness actually, I really enjoy that. So I'm just gonna shred some of this up and then I'm gonna add some endive on top. And we'll get this salad all ready to go. So all we need to do is dress it when it is time to eat. So this is just a simple salad with a really simple vinaigrette. Um, and it's nice because to me, it's, it's kind of definitely more of an Italian uh, salad. And if you didn't know already, my version of shrimp and grits is going to be an Italian style version. Um, and while I do a lot of Italian cooking, I love Italian cooking, I have not, not that I'm aware of, I have no Italian in me, um, but living in Philly, it's hard not to have that influence. And I think honestly, just the influence of some of the Italian chefs that have been on the um, cooking network and the, or the cooking channel and the food network have definitely influenced me. Let me just put my romaine away. Since I don't have my other camera, we are gonna actually, the one, so I will tell you, the one thing that is nice about um, doing it just from my phone through the YouTube app is usually I've got all these wires connected to my laptop um, and I've already washed this. I'm just gonna take off these outer layers. And, um, but the one thing that has changed um, is that I don't have all those wires connected so I can move this around more. So since I don't have a remote camera there, because I'm not doing it through my laptop, the fancy stuff I can do when I do it through a computer. Um, I'm just gonna bring the camera around so you can see my, my stove better. So Lashandra oh. said it's raining here, I love shrimp and grits, and then um, uh, or, uh, most olive oil is on the, I'm sorry, um, most olive oils on the shelf are not. On the shelf. On the shelf, I'm sorry, <laughs> are not. He really does not, know how to read. 
I'm just teasing you, babe. Unfortunately. However, the olive oil you have, there's my favorite. Yes. It's one of the, very, it's one of the few oh, real here. olive oils in America. Yes. And luckily, it's also... And then he said, hello, Andy. <laughs> it's readily available, too. Frozen. And I, and I feel like... Oh, Bo, hi, it's so good to have you. It's a better, it, actually, no, it's not a better time. This is still a bad time for you. Next weekend, Bo, it's all about you. Next weekend, you won't, I won't be catching you so late. And they said hello to me, so hello. And Andy says hello. He'll be joining us in a little bit. He's, I'm going to put him to work when I need him. because watching baseball and golf. He's watching baseball and golf, and he was previously watching basketball. He loves his sports, that is for sure. So he says hi to everyone. But yes, this is my go-to olive oil. Um, it, you're right, yes, it is. It's nice because it's authentic and um, it's actually not badly priced considering the quality and it's, I, I can find it. So that's one of the things I love about it too. So I just have my, um, my radicchio, my endive and my uh, romaine right there for my salad. And then actually that is all I'm gonna do right now with this. I'm gonna make my dressing. I'm gonna put this in the fridge so it can stay chilled. And at the end, I'll sprinkle some fresh um, Parmesan cheese. Actually, babe, there is something I would love for you to do right now. Yep. Could you, um, and I know you'll love, because you'll love taking a bite. So this is a real funny story. So we were, I was preparing um, the setup today, and I went, um, I went over, <laughs> I went out of the kitchen to go finish getting ready myself. And I come back in the kitchen, and Hubs is like, um, so I went to sneak a, a bite of the Parmesan cheese and I didn't realize it was wrapped in plastic. So he said, so I think I might've eaten plastic. <laughs> so, so the cheese was over there on this plate. Go show him the plate, babe. It's I did, okay. I, I, We're truthful here on the stream. We're truthful of the goings-ons in our, in our little corner of the word world here in Philly. So, so anyway, so bring it over so they can see. So this was wrapped. I just gotten some more um, Parmigiano Reggiano and it was wrapped in plastic because you know, I, I was ready to use it um, in a little bit. And so he likes to use on the microplane, if you go like this, it gives you a chunk. Uh, but the problem was he didn't realize it still had plastic on. Plastic. So we ate some plastic. So yeah, so if you could... And um, Amy, in her, her, in, in her very caring way, <laughs> said, well, did you take the plastic off? Well, yeah, I mean, like, since you realized it had plastic on, did you take it off? Because she he knew I was going to be using it for the recipe, right? And he he's like, he said, it. he said, no. And I'm like, well, you he weren't even if you wanted it off. Okay, so, so um, go so go, no, because just, oh, just, just over there. Okay. Yeah, and just um, like a half cup, just eyeball it. Okay. okay. So I'm going to put this into chill. Hobbs, I'm sure, will take more bites of the yummy Parmesan. Yes, I will. I need to get this into my fridge, find a spot. There we go. Oh, no, that's not going to work. A little tight in here today. Got a lot going on in the fridge today. Um, and then I'm going to get the dressing. So the dressing is super. Broke off. That was weird. <laughs> it's my cheese will be like from this size to this size by the time I get it because he's just gonna he's just gonna eat a lot, I imagine. All right. So um, in here, I'm just gonna be. So I I'm not gonna go over the amounts. If you are interested in the salad, if you look up. GZ, uh, the letters GZ, tri-color salad, it'll pop up um, and you can see the actual amounts. But I do know it's just a smidge of mustard, of Dijon, oh, girl, and that always happens. It always happens, yet I never flip it back up. Oh my goodness, and then I waste, oh, I waste all this Dijon. Ugh. Okay, so if you ever see me with Dijon, please feel free to say, Philly, make sure you flip up the Dijon before you get any out because I just did that. Oh my gosh. And I waste, well, um, I started, so I always keep it over so that it, it does, you don't have to get it like to the top, but then if you open it that way, it just pours out. And it happens every time. It gets me every time, which is I think what frustrates me more than anything. Okay, so I don't need this much Dijon because I'm just making enough for our little salad. So I'm gonna flick some of that out. That's a professional term, flick. And I'm gonna add about the same, I don't know, a little bit, maybe twice the amount um, for honey, just some honey in there, some honey, honey. I just bought this today at our farmer's, not our farmer's market, but our nearby market. It is from, um, where does it say? From West Glen, PA, so it's a local honey. Then I'm gonna add some salt and pepper, not too much, because we are gonna be adding Parmesan, so that'll, 
that'll add some salt to it. And then I'm just gonna eyeball. So this is uh, white wine vinegar. And it was so funny when I was talking about this vinegar the other day at the stream, I was, I was noticing that it was a Chardonnay wine vinegar and I was kind of giggling about it because I was like, what are the other white wine vinegars? Are they Chardonnay, are they something else? And in, on Jeezy's recipe, he actually specified Chardonnay or Sherry. So I thought, oh, I actually have the right ingredient. Who would have thunk it, right? So I'm just gonna add probably, I don't know, like a tablespoon. And then I'm just gonna get it mixed up with my little mini whisk. And then I'm gonna just add enough olive oil to taste. I really feel like with vinaigrettes, everyone likes um, their own ratio, right? I like a pretty tangy vinaigrette, but some people might not have the tolerance of vinegar and they might like a more um, oil forward vinaigrette. So then I'm just gonna add enough oil to kind of get it emulsified and then I'm gonna taste it. So mine are probably more like, this one's probably more of a one to two ratio. Let's see what y'all are doing. So is everyone good? It's a great crowd here. Oh my gosh, it is so humid. So Philly uh, kept with the curls today. It was uh, time to wash the hair and I had some errands to run and, there, and we had thunderstorms predicted and there was no way I was gonna try to straighten my hair because my hair does, as you see, it has curl to it. And yeah, that was not gonna happen. Now what were your errands there, Amy? Hmm? What were your errands? My errand, oh, I had to go dress shopping, which I absolutely detest. And it's funny, because when I was a little girl, the thought of a dress, going dress shopping would have been a wonderful, exciting thing, but as an adult, I don't, I don't like it at all. I'm gonna get a piece of lettuce just to try this and see how it is. So let me get one of my things for my salad, get a little piece of endive. Just wanna taste it, see if I've got everything right. Ooh, perfect. Again, just taste it and make sure it's the ratio you like of acid to fat, salt and pepper, the honey and the Dijon are just really good in there. So our dressing's ready to go. I'm gonna put this whole thing into my fridge to stay chilled until we're ready for a salad. All right. So before I get started with the shrimp and grits, I wanna tell you a little bit about the recipe. So um, there is a shrimp and grits recipe that I will share sometime that, that I have, because it all started with actual shrimp and grits that I um, have made, Andy and I, quite a few times, like many times over the years. Um, and actually it was one that kind of was inspired by again watching something on the Food Network. And it's, it's very traditional. With the grits, I do make them cheesy. I often use like a spicy cheese in it. Just, I like heat, so um, I would add cheese to the grits and then lots of uh, spices and some heat to the shrimp. I didn't always have like a tasso ham, which is more traditional. So um, sometimes would just get like some sort of summer sausage, something that just had like, that was cured and give you that little bit of sausageness um, with it. But, but that's kind of how I started. But then one of the things that we love here is we do love polenta. And, um, and I hadn't had polenta in a while. So when I made my version of the shrimp and grits, it was, my, it was an Italian version. So instead of grits being the base, it was another corn base, which is polenta. Um, and I do, I actually, I love grits, I love polenta, but not everyone likes the texture of either or. So if you don't care for the texture of polenta, try grits. If you don't care for the texture of grits, try polenta, because they, they're similar in flavor. They're similar, not completely the same, but um, texture is definitely different. Um, so my shrimp and grits are gonna involve polenta, and I'm gonna show you some great shortcuts that hopefully you will enjoy um, and that you might wanna try because it makes it easy. And, um, and I actually am gonna lighten them a little bit because it is April and we already are thinking about some beach vacations and you know, it was winter, so Hubs and I ate winter foods and now I don't know that I like the idea of putting on a swimsuit. So I think, you know, I kind of want to lighten up my eating. So today there will be some indulgent parts with the shrimp and grits, but I'm going to save where I can. So I'm going to show you a way that I um, veg up grits or, um, or polenta or mashed potatoes even 
to help make the calories lower, the vegetable part higher, and still get the enjoyment that I love. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going um, to get our grits started because I really want for, um, the grits are something, I'm not sorry, when I say grits, I'm gonna switch and just say polenta because my grits here are polenta. So I'm gonna get the polenta started because polenta, especially this, the one I'm making, it, it, when you get it to a certain point, it can just sit off to the side for a little bit until we're ready to add the rest of the ingredients. So that's what we're gonna do first. So because of that, I'm going to move um, my camera over, but uh, yes, so I'm gonna move my camera over. So I'm gonna put this out of the way and move my camera. Do so you remember where we ate, at least where I first really ate shrimp and grits? I do not. Watch out, camera's moving, camera's moving, camera's moving. It was a restaurant in southern New Jersey. Okay. Whoop. It was called Melange Cafe. That was the first time? That was the, like one of I the first times. That. Okay. I don't think I realized that. Yeah. Remember that place? Oh, I totally remember that it was, place. It was, it was outstanding. Phenomenal. Yes. I, they had a, they had a crab quiche, I think it was, yeah. that was unbelievable. Yeah. It was, uh, and they, he, just closed it down at some point. Well, I think a restaurant yeah, business is hard, yeah. and I think sometimes, you know, people have to have to shut it down. I always remember that. That was the first place that I didn't was. realize that was the first place you had it. So yeah. around here, I know that there are, in fact, let me move my chat so that I can keep in touch with y'all. Um, around here, there are, you know, quite a few places that have it on a brunch menu. So, you know, I do think shrimp and grits you can find in a brunch menu, and you can also see it, um, you know, just as a entree part of the menu. Archie's on. Archie's on. And LaShondra said she, he, she hadn't had polenta in a while. And um, let me see what else I'm missing. Um, <laughs> DS, I love that your wife was like, yeah, it's humid. I'm sure, sure New York City is humid also. Um, is this where the vegans hang out? <laughs> Um, this is not shrimp and grits. Not, I mean, oh my gosh, it is shrimp and grits. It's not vegan <laughs> shrimp and grits. Um, however, I have a niece who's a vegetarian and another niece who's a vegan. So much love out to both of those foodies because um, I've learned a lot through them actually. And, uh, and they are awesome. And they are great cooks, both of them. So they always impress me. So um, LaShondra says, I've never thought to use a piece of lettuce. Yes, it, it is a great... I mean, and frankly, if you have a carrot in there, use the carrot. But to me, instead of just tasting it with my finger or the spoon, it really gives me a sense with the vegetable how, and how it's clinging to the vegetable. So, so yeah. So um, that's kind of what I like to do. And <laughs> and Archie noticed that you were on one. Of, you know, you were um, on, in court the other day. <laughs> oh my goodness. A oh, Poe, and you're awesome. And it's not a pro. This is just a like trial and trial and error tip, right? Okay, so friends, um, so our polenta. So let me talk about the ingredients. Now, this was actually quite funny since I know about y'all, and I'm sure Archie, you are well aware of this, and so is DS and Alexandra. You might even be so too. I don't know. Like I, when I have any of my recipes that I do, I don't have them written down mostly, right? Because unless someone asks, like my sister or my sons, like, oh mom, how do you make that? Then I have to think and write it down. So for the recipe today, I just kind of did it because I wanted an Italian spin on it with polenta. So I also had to think, well, gee, how much garlic did I use? How much, you know, and I'm like, oh my Lord. So down below, I, to the best of my ability, I put the ingredients and the amounts that I use. So, um, but it, I will tell you full disclosure, this has not been, um, it, the recipe has not been tested per that way. Like I'm just, I'm just telling you I was going to be making, um, I'm making two servings today. So what you have down below would be two servings. If you wanted four servings, um, you could uh, obviously oh. double it. But also I'll tell you a couple things because you might not like the way I'm lightening my polenta. So I will tell you what to do if you'd rather not do that. But in any event, these are the ingredients that are going into my polenta. So I'm actually, psst, don't tell anyone. I'm using instant polenta. So um, this, this is the instant polenta that I get and it's at our markets. 
And um, while the only time I've used the instant rice was for my sweet pup Shelby, because she had digestive problems and needed to have rice to help with her um, in her last few years of life, uh, I generally like to eat like real rice. But with the instant polenta, it's very nice. So I use the instant polenta. And then for me, my liquid, I'll use um, chicken broth. And usually, I just happen to have some chicken broth, but usually I'll use the better than bouillon um, with the water. And then I like to add milk. That is an Ina Garden. Um, that was one of the times I was watching Ina Garden. And she adds a little milk when she makes polenta just to help already like get some cream factor in there. Um, and then I also add a little bit of red pepper flakes and I could add garlic. Ina adds garlic a lot of times if she's just making a regular base of polenta, but I'm not going to today because we'll have plenty of garlic in our shrimp and I know Hub's a little garlic averse at times. So in my polenta, it's gonna be instant polenta, chicken broth, milk, garlic, and red pepper flakes. And then later we're gonna add cream cheese, Parmigiano Reggiano, salt and pepper to taste. And to make it lighter, I'm gonna be adding a package of, oh my gosh, you guys are gonna hate me, but mashed cauliflower <laughs> because that is one of my big hacks with mashed potatoes, polenta, because it's a very fine texture that first of all, when you add it in, it, um, it actually helps loosen up you know, the mashed potatoes. So you wanna make your mashed potatoes a little thicker if you're gonna add it so that it then makes a nice consistency. <laughs> but it gives you the veg, oh God, what do they say? It gives you the veg um, without you even noticing. Now my son, my youngest son, Matt, who you've seen on my streams, he's super fussy. And while he doesn't dislike it, he's like, yeah, I can smell it, I can taste it. I'm telling you, we, we eat it. We don't feel like we're being good. So because we are gonna be good tonight, it is in a way <laughs> because we are going to be good tonight um that is what we're doing if you did not want to do that you could just double the polenta recipe for two um and that would be more than enough you would have more than you need but adding my cauliflower will make sure there's plenty of polenta for us and and i'm not even sure where we might have more than we need for a serving anyway so let's get to it so up here i'm going to get my heat on I'm gonna add two cups of my chicken broth. I'm not quite sure that there's still two cups in here. So if there's not, I'm just gonna add water. And by the way, if you don't wanna add chicken broth, you could just add water. Actually, you know, per any of the directions, it is just water that's in it. So, you know, yeah, right. it's just a matter of the seasonings, one second, seasonings that you add to make the polenta taste good. So really you do you, what you like, but the chicken broth adds a load of flavor to it. Archie's not a big fan of your whisk. I know, it's too colorful for him. But truth be told, he's just jealous, Arch. I know you're just jealous of it. That's all it is. Okay, so I'm making sure I have two cups. There we go. So I was a little shy, so I just added some water to it. Now, if you wanted to keep the polenta vegetarian, you could, um, you could just add veggie broth. So that would be nice. So I'm gonna let this come up to a boil. And, and then to my broth, I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of pepper flakes. I'm not trying to add actual like mega heat here, but when the pepper flakes, um, when they boil, when they kind of um, get married in the liquid, they just release a nice flavor uh, that I really like. And, uh, and so I've got that, I'm gonna get my milk, because when this comes to a boil, I'm gonna add the milk. Now I could add the milk right away, but if you add the milk to the liquid right away and bring it to a boil, you just have to be super careful because um, <laughs> milk boils over really quick. Meanwhile, I wanna measure this out to be three quarter cups. So I'm gonna get that ready right now. I feel like I'm all up close and personal with y'all right now. So I'm just gonna get this measured out. So have you, so I think LaShondra said that she, did you say you hadn't had polenta or you haven't had polenta in a while? And yes, I knew LaShondra would like the cauliflower idea. So when I'm making grits, what we actually do, and, and Maddie really gets upset with this too, is I do the, um, the cauliflower rice instead of the mashed cauliflower. You could do mashed cauliflower to the grits, but I actually find that, you know how grits have a texture? I actually find that the cauliflower rice 
actually kind of continues that texture in a good way. So that's what we do. If I'm, if I'm trying to veg up my grits, I add um, the cauliflower rice, cooked, of course, because I don't want it to be too firm. Archie said that if you move the whisk, or he's going to call me up here. <laughs> Archie has whisk envy. That's what I've determined. Got a little colorful whisk envy, that's all. We can't all have rainbow whisks, Arch, and I realize that. So maybe if you win the contest, Archie, I won't send you something Philly. I'll just send you a colorful whisk. How about that? That might be good. All right. Okay. Let's get this. So I've got three-quarter cup measured out, and then one of the things we'll do once we get the milk in and then bring everything up to a boil is we're gonna slowly pour, I'm gonna get those lumps out. We're gonna slowly pour the polenta in. Even just like with regular polenta, instant polenta, you want to do a slow pour and gradually get it in so that there's no lumps. Um, but what's nice about this is this will come together in literally just a, a few minutes and then you take it off the heat, you cover it and let it sit for they say five minutes, but really for as long as you need, because it, it hold, you know, polenta, potatoes, grits, they all hold their heat a lot. So, um, so it's good to go. So just, go, oh, you know what? It helps if I put my lid on. Lids always help. Let me get just a drink of water. But um, how do you guys like your grits and how do you like your polenta? And do you cook either often, never, sometimes? <laughs> Artsy. I think you I think you should crop it out. I think I think you should just make put like a fuzzy on it. You know how to make it fuzzy so that you can't see it? Yeah, just not course. on my whisks. Matthew, welcome. I'm so glad. I know you said you were gonna come on today. So Matthew says, I do my dish um, separate, asparagus and shrimp casserole, shrimp and macaroni casserole, and bread with cheeseburger grits. Ooh, Matthew, I gotta know more about the bread with cheeseburger grits. Wow, that sounds amazing. How do you eat your food? And Archie says she's in the kitchen terrorizing the cats. Wait, oh, is that Amy? Oh, Amy. <laughs> oh, Amy, Amy, I know. I bet you Amy likes my whisk. That's my guess. Oh, you like both of them cheesy? Yes, I am the same way. I like them both. I like them both cheesy. And like I said, for traditional grits, if I'm making especially shrimp and grits, I like to add. Um, pepper jack to it. I think that's really with butter. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Butter. But yeah. I like them. I like them zhuzhed up. He hates that word. I like them zhuzhed up. I like it's a little cheese. A word, that's why. It is a word. It's not a word. It is a word. It's I'm going to prove to him it's a word. All right. So now I'm going to measure out one cup of water. Uh, sorry. One cup of milk. One cup of milk. There we go. That put back away. Adding that. And once that comes to a boil, then we are going to add our polenta. So the spin for me with this shrimp and grits is the fact that we're making polenta instead of grits. But I love me some grits. So in fact, you know what? I don't know that there's a carb that I haven't loved. I I <laughs> I probably love carbs too much. In fact, way back in the, I don't know it was the 90s, um, I remember actually buying that book, The Carb, was it called? The Carb, Carb Addicts Diet or something. And the theory was that you, it's not that you couldn't eat carbs, but it was, I think, mostly not eating the carbs so you weren't craving them all the time. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, I just, I do, I have a love-hate relationship. I love them, but I do know they call my name. So I try to just, nowadays, just make the portion I want so there's not extra carbs hanging around in the uh, fridge. If there's extra carbs in the fridge, then they literally say my name, and I hear it until I go and finish them. So I don't know about y'all, but that's, that's what happens here. And let's see, LaShondra loves the butter in there too. And Matthew says, I was just watching Gina cooking on, ooh, Gina who, Matthew, do tell. And DS has a question here. Let me check out DS's question. So yes, tell me about Gina. Is it, um, 
Is it Gina from Skinny Taste? Because I know that's the Gina I know. Gina Young. Oh, Andy, write that down. I want to check her out. Can okay. you write down? Can you send me a text that says Gina Young? YouTube. He's like a slug on the couch, so I'll put him to work. Um, and then DS says, I'm curious, what is something you and Andy will just not eat no matter what? Beans. No, no, you no, you like beans. beans. Let me, let me get this in first. So I'm gonna slowly, I'm keeping the heat where it is. I'm gonna bologna. just slowly do this. Well, you actually had my I, bologna sandwich yeah, I made I'm the other day. I don't, I don't like bologna. Okay, he's lying kind of, but, and I'm just carefully putting these in, not carefully, just slowly, and then I'm stirring. And I'm going to stir until it starts to thicken. And so what is gonna happen Second, what is going to happen is eventually it's going to thicken and it's going to um, these big, almost like lava. Um, it's going to do these blurps, and I have burnt myself. Luckily, not really badly, but on cooking polenta. So you do want to be careful and remove it from the heat. Or in fact, I want to get my thing out, my little this because my this is getting hot. Um, because it will start blurping once it thickens. Like right now I can see they're starting to form. So if you keep it going, it'll help not have the blurp come on you. All right. So I'm just gonna do this. I think I do this for like about, and I forgot to salt and pepper it. You know what, I'll test that later. Um, I'm gonna do this for just like, I try to do it for like another minute. Maybe not even a minute. It's probably a total of about two minutes. Yep, it's starting to thicken and it's starting to blurt. So I'm just gonna actually turn it off. Oh yeah, it's blurping. So gotta be careful because I don't want it to come on me. So now I'm gonna put the lid on. It's gotten thicker and I'm just gonna let this guy hang out right back here. And it can hang out till we're ready for next steps. Next steps will involve putting in cream cheese, putting Parmesan cheese and adding the uh, mashed cauliflower. Speaking of which, I'm gonna get that out of the freezer now so I don't forget to put in the microwave. So anyway, that was a good yes. question by DS. Yeah, I gotta think. Um, so is there anything that, I mean, uh, honestly, like, bologna sandwich, yeah. like, that's the only thing I don't like is bologna. Right. Work. It's, so I'm, I am slow on, like I've never had um, a raw oyster um and but i've this year i've had two good oyster experiences we had a um in in um baltimore we had a we ordered this what was it a fried oyster and what how was it cooked was it just it was it was just exquisite fried oyster it was an exquisite oyster. fried oyster but what the funny part was is in eating it it didn't taste like a fried oyster <laughs> so that's what i liked about it um, and then we actually ordered it at the fish place um, with caviar. It was like one of their special appetizers and had caviar on top, and that was exquisite. So I've had it really exquisite ways, but I wouldn't, I, I don't want to, I don't have any desire to slurp a raw one. So raw actually is my, is where I get a little more funny. Um, I love a medium rare steak, but I don't like the idea of beef tartare. I would try it, but I would never order it for myself. Um, and honestly, it was, he, you had a big influence with me on sushi, yeah. you know, because I wasn't comfortable eating the raw fish. Now I love raw fish and I try a lot of things. So I've heard in, um, I don't know if it's Japan, I imagine it's probably Japan. I've heard, and it might be other places in Asia, um, but in Japan specifically, I think, where they have these sushi bars where they literally will take like a fish or a crustacean and it's like killed and on your plate and may even still be moving or something. Like I would never do that. I just, I, it just kind of skews me out. <laughs> so that is something I, I would, I will say I would never do. I, I might have a raw oyster at some point. He might convince me. He might need to give me a cup of margaritas till I'm convinced. Um, but, uh, but I don't like, like the idea of that. So I do have a love hate relationship with raw meats. So, and including raw fish. So that's kind of, but I, I've so, come such a long way with sushi. I love sushi. And honestly, I don't think, 
Andy, I've met a raw, like a sushi, a sushi Eel. fish. No, but we think part of that's just in my mind because I like your sauce, right? Um, anyway, I've had some some sushi fish that was really fishy so that I didn't like. Now. That was I said. So what is it that we would cook? Or we oh, would I thought eat? it was what I would need. That's why I said. What we would need. So. I said a a just killed fish that uh, is then on my plate so. for sushi. I, I was I I said I it. You, you are not a good listener. He's yeah. not a good listener. He's not a good listener. <laughs> Wow, he's pushy today. Okay, so here, so now this is what I do. I'm just gonna show you what I do. So this is um, mashed cauliflower frozen. You can hear it. And I, because I was making these Italian style, I actually got the roasted garlic one because it adds more flavor. So you could get plain. I chose the roasted garlic and I'm actually, because I'm gonna notoriously forget about this and it won't be ready to, up to, to uh, mix into my polenta. So I'm gonna get this cooking so it is good to go. So just cook per the directions. It starts at four minutes and then it'll go for another four minutes after I stir it. So I'm gonna get that going in the microwave. So I apologize for the microwave noise because you'll hear that. So let's just get it in here. Oops, that's not what I want. Okay, so microwave is going. Now our shrimp, so let me get our shrimp. Put the milk away. So here I have a half pound of peeled and deveined shrimp. You could leave the tap tails on. They would look pretty and they would add to the flavor of the sauce. And I am paid to say that. No, I'm not paid to say it. I, um, I am lazy <laughs> and I would just rather not mess with them at home like in the restaurant, that's how they do it. And I'm like cutting. And what I really hate is I'm cutting off that tail and there's that tail meat that I'm not gonna eat because I'm at a restaurant and I can't do that. But at home, I just take off everything off the tail so I get every bit of shrimp. Now, I could leave the tail on and I could just get out that meat myself, right? Because I'm at home, I can do whatever I want. But I just want it even easier. So the only time I leave the tails on the shrimp are when I make my light Southern barbecue shrimp because I know the way, the nature of that, it really does add flavor to the barbecue sauce. So um, I do leave those on then. But yeah, this is what I do. So half pound, I've got my shrimp. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss them with some Italian seasoning. By the way, Archie will give you a snack. Oh, that's a good, no, but if I do that Arch, I'm getting the big whisk. I'm gonna definitely give them a snack with this, right? There you go. All right, so I'm gonna take my shrimp, just dump them in my bowl. There we go, those are all set. And um, then to my shrimp, I'm just gonna be adding some Italian seasoning. I guessed it was probably about a half teaspoon for a half pound of shrimp of Italian seasoning. So, it, but it really, you know, whatever seems right. But if you want to know specifically, I guesstimated a half teaspoon. Um, and then I want some salt and pepper. Let's get my salt and pepper. I just do it a pinch at a time, so I, I don't know what that is. There's, you know, I'm going to be tasting as we go along. Um, and there's going to be salt in the end product with the different things we're using. So I, you know, when we're at a restaurant, everything is very seasoned. We went out last night to the restaurant May May, and I felt, as Andy would say, I felt like a tick at the end of the night. It was like, like you know, just you retain water because everything puffs up because everything was so salty. So at home, I definitely use less salt, but I know um, I really try to season it just right so that it's super tasty to us, um, but not killing us. So in any event, I just have my shrimp, my salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil a little bit. I'm going to toss that up and then these are just going to go back in the fridge to stay cool until it's time to cook. Okay, so see what I did? I just tossed them up and that way I do this ahead because I feel like it can, they can add a little flavor and let me get that plate because I'm also realizing my bowl won't fit in my fridge because I've got too much stuff in there right now. So I'm going to actually, you don't need to do this, but you might have more room in your fridge than I do. So that's what I'm going to have to do. So I'm going to put these in the fridge until cook time. And what I'm getting out is 
pancetta. So I'm gonna get my heat on. Put it on medium high for right now. Um, medium is probably what you're supposed to do, but I wanna get things going. I'm gonna put, this is five ounces of pancetta. I'm gonna put about two ounces in the pan. So I'm putting about a little, a little more than a third in the pan. So the pancetta is gonna do a couple different things. I'm gonna keep it on high till it gets warmed up because I'm impatient. Um, the pancetta is going to render down and we're going to have these yummy, salty um, bites at the end to go with our shrimp, which again, kind of would take the place of the tasso ham. And what I like about this pancetta specifically is it's cut a little bit um, bigger. So if you cut your own pancetta, you could make them super small, but I like them a little bigger because it just, again, to me, it, it um, just gives you a nice bite of saltiness. So we're gonna render that down and we're gonna drain it on a paper towel and then we're gonna add that at the end. So let me get a paper towel ready and my, my microwave is ready for me to stir my frozen uh, mashed cauliflower. So let me get that stirred. Out there. Let's get that stirred and that's going to go back in for four minutes according to its directions and then it'll be ready to go when I'm ready to finish off my polenta. Okay. Thank you for doing the Parmesan cheese by the way, babe. You're welcome. So since it has come to heat, I actually put it back down to medium. I think true rendering should be done in a cold pan, but like, you know, on low and yada, yada, yada. But I just, I'm too impatient for that. I'm just going to be honest. And then what'll happen is what's left behind will be a base of flavor for my shrimp. So then the shrimp will get that yummy flavor as well. Okay, I turned down my heat because it was smoking. I didn't want it to smoke. I actually do want that fat to render off. So I'm going to be a good little cook. And I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil to kind of help it along. You don't need to do this, but I'm just going to feel better about it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil to help it along. So let me see what's what I missed in chat. So Archie's still talking about the rainbow whisk. Uh, polenta works well with seafood. Yes, I, I, I actually, I think polenta works great with a, um, you could do some sort of like veggie ragu, ragu to put on top or like a short rib. Oh my gosh, polenta would be amazing with like a short rib um, done many different ways. And then Archie says, did you buy the company who makes the whisks? Um, actually, I own the comp I own the company, Arch. Um, you've been insulting my whisks all along, and you know I just don't know if I can be friends anymore. Um, so pancetta, and let's see. The, yes, those. <laughs> yes, our pancetta is bigger here too. The cubes. Um, everything's bigger here, Archie. You gotta come over here so that you can experience this. Um, let's see. Well done for not using a rainbow wooden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to look for one of those, Archie, just for you. Oh, Eugenia, welcome. I'm so glad you were able to come on. Welcome to the stream. We are, uh, for anyone just joining us, I'm going to turn my heat down because since I did not follow the rules of rendering, I now have a pan that's too hot. So you see, don't do what Philly does. So be patient. That is that is the um, the lesson here. Be patient. But Eugenia, welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. We have a lot of people chit chatting, so feel free to pipe along. But up till now, what we've done is we've made the base of the polenta. Uh, my spin on, on shrimp and grits is uh, shrimp and grits Italian style. So instead of grits, grits, I'm using polenta, and um, I've got the pancetta rendering. 
and my shrimp will be going in here. I added some spices to my shrimp uh, just to help them start uh, marrying with those flavors before I add them to the pan. So those are in the fridge right now. And to lighten up my polenta, I'm adding, and I know this is gonna make a lot of people upset, but I'm adding some mashed cauliflower, frozen cauliflower. I, he's doing that, Arch, he's doing that. And Archie is offended by rainbow whisk. So that's all you need to know to get caught up. But, um, but, I, but I will say that, uh, um, and now I, oh, oh, with the, I lost my train of thought. Um, with the mashed cauliflower is you don't need to do that. You could just double the recipe for the, uh, the, the polenta if you don't want to lighten it up. But we're just going to be real. This is what we're doing because we want to save on the calories and amp up the veg. So that is what we're going to be doing. And we frankly do that a lot in our everyday cooking um, with mashed potatoes and grits and things like that. So that's almost done. So this is getting close to being rendered. There's one really big old uh, cube that is being a little fussy right now. So I, I'm hoping he'll render down a little bit. I'm going to actually finish off my polenta so it's ready to go. Um, and I'm going to show you how we do that. So I'm going to take my polenta that we've made just a little bit earlier. So Eugenio, this was the polenta we made. This is going to be hot. So I'm going to take that off, show y'all. And I'm going to switch to a spoon. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to use this. So let me show you. So now you can see, see? It's gotten thick. Um, and then to that, what I'm going to be adding, let me do it here so you can see better. Yeah, I think you can all see a little bit better if I do it here. This is going to continue to render. I turned this down because there's a couple of stubborn pieces. So just turning that down a little bit. I'll put that there. One second, friends. Let me just get some of that olive oil down there for this stubborn piece. There we go. So to that, I'm going to add about one to two tablespoons of cream cheese. I use the um, thirdless fat cream cheese. I don't use, oops, sorry. There, that's ready. I don't use it for um, cooking, but when I'm using it, uh, now I am cooking today. Let me rephrase that. I don't use it for baking, but I use it for other cooking things because I don't notice the difference. So I'm going to just take off a nice hunk of that. I think it's probably more like two tablespoons. And I'm going to plop that in. As Ina would say, how bad could that be, right? That's going to add a lovely cream factor to our polenta. And I'm going to stir it in to get that melted. So that will add creaminess. And honestly, with, with that, just like anything else, you can add what you're comfortable with. Maybe you just want to add one tablespoon, right? So with home cooking, we can kind of do what we're comfortable with. And that all works. Just my uh, microwave got very con condensy, very a lot of condensation from the uh, this cauliflower. So that's all melting in here, super hot. As I, you can see that the steam coming up, like this thing, this just holds heat. And now I'm going to add these piping hot mashed cauliflower. Be careful not to burn your hand because this is really hot. And then it's the same, it's actually even a, a lighter consistency than the polenta. So all it's going to do is it's just going to lighten it up. So I'm just building it in. And it's just going to lighten it up. It's going to add some veg to it that you won't even know. You won't even know. Our son is the only one who will know because he's just like, he's just so, he's just a bit fussy. And then I'm going to add about a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. And just again, toss that in. I'm going to test it for salt and pepper. And then I'm going to put this lid on and let it hang out until we're ready. But you can see it's, it's creamy, see? It's a nice creamy consistency. So let me give it a taste. I'll use this. It needs more salt and pepper. That's why you taste. Okay. And a considerable amount. 
I saw. There we go. It really needed salt. Now I get a reduced, um, reduced sodium, you know, uh, chicken broth, but wow, that needs salt. But that's why we taste. And let me get my little spoon and go the other way. Oh, it's so much better. There we go. Okay, that's better. So this is good to go. I'm just gonna whoop, get that pound of off. Get this off and this will hang out. This is ready for plating once we're ready. And again, that will continue to hold heat, which is what's awesome. Now, I'm looking here and ours, everything's all rendered. It looks great and it's crispy and some of the bigger pieces are just gonna be chewy. And so I'm gonna get my little slide spoon and I'm going to just drain this on paper towel right nearby so I don't forget. There we go. Get that little piece. Excellent. And now this has flavor for our shrimp. So now I'm going to turn up the heat, get this back up to medium high, and I'm going to get my shrimp. Let's see what I've missed. So, so yeah, you should. You should Let's see it. here. Um, so <laughs> Archie's trying to pour Eugenia. You're so welcome to be here, and now you have Archie trying to get you in trouble with his with his petition. <laughs> oh, you have a rainbow whisk. Oh, oh, Eugenia, rainbow whisks unite, right? We're gonna get a rainbow whisk co coalition. I think this is awesome. <laughs> and Archie wants you to stay out of the way, the weird fella. Oh, yeah, well, yes. Um, yes. Yes, uh, oh, and hit the like button. Yes, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And also, oh, we're getting a little hot here, so I'm going to take this off. I wasn't paying attention. You see what happens when I don't pay attention? So I'm taking off the heat. So I'm getting a little warm. I'm going to get my shrimp out. Okay. Now, everything else is going to come together pretty quick. So let me just tell you what's happening while this, this cools off a little bit. Um, we are going to be searing our shrimp super quick. Let me get my, my tongs out. We're going to be searing our shrimp that have been kind of marinating with the flavors of the Italian seasoning, um, salt and pepper, and olive oil. We're going to give them a quick sear on both sides, and then we're going to um, uh, hit it with some white wine. And if you don't drink white wine or if you don't have white wine, you could always just use some chicken broth or water um, if you don't have chicken broth. But it is nice having something that has a little bit of flavor to it. Uh, just about a quarter cup um, and let that reduce and get all the little bits that have accumulated on the bottom of the pan. And then I'm gonna be adding a little bit of this pepperoncino. So you could just do red pepper flakes at this step. I'm not sure about the exact amount, so maybe just sprinkle some pepper flakes. But these are nice. These are um, extra hot calabrese pepperoncino, and they are spicy. So it's just going to be a scant like quarter or teaspoon that I'm going to throw in there after the wine reduces. And also add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Both of those are just going to kind of develop this just lovely background that's gonna help support the shrimp in giving flavor, a little tomatoiness. Um, we're gonna cook that tomato paste off a little bit to give that some yumminess. And, um, and then we'll add some garlic also. Um, after, after that cooks a little bit, we'll add a little bit of garlic and butter, and then it's gonna be time to plate. So it's all gonna to come together really quick. So let me put this back in the heat and let's get these shrimp going. Gonna get these. I want to actually flip these as opposed to doing a stir fry. Yeah, tell me, yeah. tell me, because I can't see right now. Is, it's like I've dealt with the rascally Mr. Pie guy before. <laughs> you are, you are um, not a newbie to this, right, Eugenia? And they said, "Mummy shrimp." Archie said, "Mummy shrimp." Of course, they are. All right, so I have this on medium high heat. I like that it was smoking a little bit, um, but I wished I hadn't been so chatty, but I need to kind of let you know what was gonna be happening. So we're gonna let these go for a minute. We're gonna flip them, and then we're gonna start adding 
the uh, remainder of things we have to make these super yummy. Okay, so we're just letting these go. I'm getting this ready. This will, oh, I need to get the wine out too. Don't want to forget that. Let me get the wine out. So if you, as I would tell you, if I didn't have a wine, a bottle of wine already open, I would say um, if you have vermouth, uh, just use some vermouth in it. Um, that is my mom's wine trick that she taught me in a pinch. Um, unless you're cooking for Jeffrey Sakarian or someone like that, um, just do that. So I'm going to flip these. Because I do not want to overcook my shrimp. those go for one more minute and then we're going to deglaze with some of the wine. I'm going to get this open. There we go. I'm going to pour myself a glass actually. And I'll pour Hubs a glass just because uh, even though he can be a pain in my patootie, he's, he's my sweetie. Right babe? I don't know if I think of that as a <laughs> Okay. All right. Take a little sip because I have to make sure it tastes okay. You know, taste along as we cook. Oh, that's good. So, um, and I think Poe, you know this. One of the wines I like from the same vintner or whatever is um, Notorious Pink. This is their uh, white blend, Infamous Gold. It's quite good. It's quite good. So I did. It's right there. Um, it's right there next to the olive oil. That's yours. All right, so friends, we are ready to add some wine. I'm about a quarter cup. There we go. Put this away. Let that deglaze. We don't need this one anymore. So I just like the flavor of the wine imparts, but I do want this to reduce down for sure. And then I'm going to be adding to this um, about a quarter teaspoon of the um, Calabrian chilies. And I'm going to get some garlic in here. Probably about two cloves. I think I put one clove because I didn't know like what everyone would like. And this will be like a tablespoon. <gasps> oh, shoot. I added the wrong thing. <laughs> I was adding anchovies. Not that they would be bad, but let me take this off the heat. I did not want to get anchovies in this dish. Oh, that'll be new. Oh, excuse me. Uh-oh, I think I've got a new um, tomato paste. Oh, 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 here it is. Oh my gosh, friends. What? Okay, now we got the tomato paste. Did anyone notice when I was handing it up before that I was handing up anchovies? And I love anchovies, but I did not want them in this dish. There we go. A tablespoon of tomato paste. Holy cow, that would have been a totally different dish and not what I was looking for. Let's get this going. Okay, so this is getting reduced. And Diaz, you're right. You can smell it. Oh, it smells so good. And that way the, um, what is it called? The tomato paste kind of reduces and adds flavor. The spice adds spice. Really yummy. Actually, I do want to use this to kind of flip some of these a little bit. And I'm gonna get this off the heat soon because my shrimp are cooked. The only other thing I need to add to this, and then I'm gonna actually turn off the heat, is my butter. So I've got a tablespoon of butter right there. Butter makes things better. It just kind of rounds out everything. I turned off my heat. I'm gonna take this off. Um, the butter just kind of mellows that Calabrese peppers. My shrimp are plump. And it's just a nice little sauce here. A lot of the sauce isn't going to actually be going on to the polenta. Just a little bit kind of comes on. And this is just plenty. You don't need. It's really the star of the show is the shrimp and the polenta. Um, it's not like a Italian dish where you're going to have a big old sauce just covering everything. So I'm going to set these aside so they don't overcook. 
I'm going to open up my polenta and I'm going to plate. So to plate, I'm going to move y'all back to where you usually are. And I can see my face is getting red because I'm getting a little flustered with, um, well, I think because first of all, I had wine and that flusters me. Not the wine flusters me, but the wine makes my face go red. Is that good? Okay. Um, there we go. But also, oh, that's um, kind of weird. what? When you do the whole moving thing. Oh, sorry. So y'all get sick. Did everyone, did anyone like vomit when I moved to the camera? <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so we are ready to plate up. And I gotta put this rainbow whisk, rainbow whisk back away because we didn't use it. Sorry, I didn't mean to taunt you there, my friend, but you know, you kind of were asking for it. All right, so it's time to plate up. Let me get that salad out. So, so are you said, Eugenia, can I apologize on behalf of Philly for the weird guy popping in and out of the picture, exposed to experience for me? <laughs> So, no apologies, so this was the salad that we made earlier with um, romaine endive and radicchio. And this was the dressing that was Dijon and honey, um, wine vinegar, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And I'm just going to drizzle this on. Not probably all, just. Yeah, that should be enough. And I want to make sure I get lots of Parmesan in there. Actually, Hubs, I think you're going to need to do more Parmesan. I think we're going to need some more. So I'm gonna get Parmesan on that. I'm gonna add a little extra black pepper. Oh yeah, we definitely need more Parmesan. Okay. A little extra black pepper. I love black pepper on my salads. So first course, or I should say the course that's gonna go with our shrimp is our tricolor salad um, a la GZ. Jeffrey Zach Sakarian, or whoever has his name. Sakarian. Sakarian. Hub says it's Sakarian. Um, and now let's get, I'm going to just do one because, um, How much more do I need? that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Thanks babe. I'm just going to do one and I'll plate up the other one, sweetie, after the stream. Okay. So I'm just going to put, and again, this is probably more polenta than you need for two people, but you know, just kind of put in a nice blob in here. So definitely, definitely is more than you need. And then I'm going to get my shrimp, and I don't want to forget my um, my pancetta. So let's see. Come, oh, sweetie, we're about ready. So if you want to come on over, my dear. Okay. We'll put five there. Right now. Pancetta. That's all pretty. There we go. And you want to grab the forks and then sprinkle some cheese because that makes it nice. And I'm going to give, I'm going to get a little bit of Italian parsley that you know I've got in my freezer because that's, that's how I roll. Pardon. My frozen Italian parsley. Oops. There we go. It's funny. I couldn't get this closed, and now I can't get it open. Let me do it. Yes. You might break a nail, but. I don't have any nails. Do you see the one to? Nope. It's that one. <laughs> that thing is in there, man. Yeah. There we go. I heard it pop. God, I can't get it. You can't get it. Okay, no parsley. We're not doing parsley. It's okay. It's okay. We're no parsley. No parsley. Okay, I'm going to work I'm off screen. I'm making an executive decision. No parsley. Um, and I'm going to do a little drizzle of olive oil. Got it. I knew... I knew I kept around for something. Stubborn. I just want to make sure it's parsley and not cilantro. Get a little parsley. I broke my finger, but it's, it's fine. You can put that back in. Just put it in upright so it doesn't come out. And Freezer? there we are, friends. Yes. There's our Which are? top right. There's our shrimp and grits my way, Italian style. And it's time for tasting. Right. Grab your wine. 
So I'm gonna get some grits, I'm gonna get a little pancetta. I'm gonna take a big old shrimp. I would take a smaller one since we're probably not gonna to wanna to cut this here. What's up? I would take a smaller one, so on that one, just so you don't have, well, no, you do you. You have you the mouthful you. of food. You tell me oh, what blah, to blah, do. Blah, blah, blah. You tell me what to do, and then you say, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. The shrimp are cooked perfectly. Wow. So, That's really good. it is just delicious comfort food. I will say, I would have. I wish I would have had a little bit more of the cal calabrese um, pepperoncini just for a little more bite. There's more back heat. It's so good. Um, it's so good. It's just and the polenta with the um, the cheeses. Oh man. And the pancetta. That's really mm. good. Well the done. The crispy, chewy little bites. Mm. And then we gotta get a, a taste of the salad. Mmm. It's perfect. Oh, what did you go in the middle? I don't know. What am I supposed to do? Well, I want to get a picture later. Oh. I was trying to be like discreet. It's all about the. It's, it's all about all, the picture. It's all about the picture. It's all about the picture. That's a good salad. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum, yum, excellent. Well, friends, oh my goodness, Matthew, Eugenia, Poe, um, DS, Archie, Greg. Um, I don't know if I missed anybody else and everybody else who's watching that maybe doesn't feel comfortable saying hello, which is totally fine because I appreciate you watching. I appreciate your support. This is delicious. It actually, um, I put the recipe, my recipe all down below is quite easy. Um, I just want to tell you a couple of things um, and that you can keep being because this is yours. I'll just add a little bit more oh, once we come sorry. back on. I got chipped on you're not gonna get chipped. We always go over this. I count how many things you'll get the same amount as I will get. So my sons are very competitive with food. <laughs> they get it from him. I don't him. So in any event, um, a couple of things. So we'll be streaming again on Tuesday. Tuesday is going to be a takeout Tuesday try or buy. There is a new place that's actually a chain um, called Hangry Joe's Hot Chicken. It's a Nashville style hot chicken. Um, it's currently in 12 states. It's a growing chain. It was founded in Southern Virginia in um, a town called Ashland. That's where the original location was. I love hot chicken, so I'm really anxious to try it. I know on Twitter you can find some people really dissing chains, and I agree. Like, I'm not a big chain person. No offense, Applebee's, but like for places like that. But, um, but this is intriguing to me because it's trying to bring a, um, a regional cuisine across the country and I kind of give them big props for that. So that's going to be our try or buy because they just opened up one in Old City and we want to check it out. So that'll be Tuesday. And then Saturday is the five hour stream that, <coughs> excuse me, it made me cough, that Crazy Philly is doing next Saturday on the 22nd from 11 a.m. <coughs> to right. 4 p.m. Right I'm all right there. Thank you, babe. I'm good. Um, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., I'm going to be doing a stream. So I'm going to let you know a little bit about it today. I'll let you a little know, let you know a little bit about it on Tuesday, and then I'll give you the full details as we get closer to there. But I will let you know that it's starting off with me getting lunch ready for us. And Archie, you are going to love to hear this because I am making um, a chili crisp pizza pie that I've heard about. So in New York City, and yes, maybe you've heard of this place. It's, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but the pizza place is called Polly G's. The Chili Crisp and um, Asian restaurant is called Zian's. It's X I apostrophe A N. And they have um, Polly G's collaborated with them because they could get their Chili Crisp and made their Zian famous pizza. Now, they aren't currently having it there, which I didn't know was a thing because when I first found out about this recipe, maybe in September, it was still on their menu. But I'm gonna to try to recreate it. So I'm gonna make my favorite pizza dough, which I've not shared yet. It's not my own, I did not create it. It was from, um, I forget the cookbook. I'll share the cookbook that I got from. It makes an excellent, excellent, excellent pizza dough. But it will need to rise. So I'll put it together earlier in the morning so that at lunchtime it's ready. So it's gonna be a homemade pizza crust. And on this pizza is um, going to be mild gouda, baby spinach, olive oil, ground lamb, and chili crisp drizzled on top. So I'm gonna to be making that and letting you know how it is. And Archie, I know you'll be interested in that. 
Um, and that's all I'm gonna tell you for now. So that's how this stream is gonna be starting off, making a very yummy lunch with chili crisp because that's one of my favorite condiments. Um, yeah, so I'm just letting it in on the beginning uh, for next week. So you guys, thank you so much for coming on stream. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your company and your conversation. Um, we are gonna eat dinner now. So cheers to y'all and have a lovely rest of your Saturday. Have a great Sunday and until we eat again, thank you so much guys.